Hello and welcome back to Pangkarniwang Developer Program Structure Track. In this lesson, we're going to discuss another sample program, finding an item in the list. Hanapin natin kung nag-exist ba isang item sa list. And you're going to see this problem pop up a lot of times in normal programs. Kaya tingnan natin yung mga various ways we can check the existence of an item dun sa ating list. Sinabi nga natin, dalawa yung scenario sa titignan na rito. First scenario is yung list natin, hindi siya naka-order. And yung second scenario is kung naka-order yung list. As you might think, mas madaling maghanap ng isang item sa isang list na ordered kaysa dun sa list na hindi ordered. So let's start with the first, yung unordered list. Ang pinang-obvious solution dyan, which is dadaanan natin lahat ng items one by one. Titignan natin kung yun yung item na hinahanap natin. So, we're just going to go through the list. Kaya, paano na ito gagawin sa ating wala programming language? Ito yung isang form ng ating solution. Gamit na yung isa sa mga unang looping statements na diniscuss tayo sa mga previous samples, which is yung while. So, we have function search given an integer array list and an integer number later na lang na discuss bakit meron na data types yung function na yan as opposed sa previous na examples natin na walang data types yun na lang punta na lang kayo dun sa ating function declaration lesson anyway so yung whole program is pretty straightforward create a variable index start with zero Kasi yung maaari natin, they're indexed at 0. Yung unang item nila is yung item 0. Then, as long as yung index hindi pa lumalagpas dun sa size ng list, size ng array natin, tuloy-tuloy lang natin i-check yung current item, kung ano yung current na tinitignan natin na item dun sa list with yung number na pinrovide natin, na hinahanap natin. Then, kung hindi niya mahanap, increase lang niya yung number ng index by 1, increment lang niya by 1, then, tuloy, tuloy lang, kung umabot na siya dun sa end ng list, magre-return na lang siya ng false. Okay, so, let's go through it. Dito, hanapin natin yung, say, item na 30. So, meron tayong list. Ito na yung list natin. Then, yung number na hanapin natin is 30. Start tayo sa umisa. Assign natin 0 to index. Then, nga, yung while. Just note na yung size of ng list natin is 9 kasi 9 items yung list natin. Then, return true if list index is equal to number. So, list index, so list 0 is 14, hindi siya equal dun sa 30 natin. Kaya, hindi tayo magre-return true. Tutuloy lang tayo, assign index plus 1 to index. Then, next iteration, index is still less than 9, list 1 is 6, so it's not equal to number. Tuloy lang, increase natin yung index. So, sinet natin, list 2 is 55, so hindi pa rin. Increment lang natin ulit. Then, index is still less than 9. Index is 3, still less than 9. At this point, list 3 is 30. And yung hinanap natin number is 30. So, re-return na tayo ng true. Ayan, uh, yun naman yung hinahanap natin dun sa ating function. It returns true when the item is in the list, otherwise it would return false. Try natin isang example na magre-return siya ng false. So, let's search for the number 49. 49 is not in this list, pero yun, sundan lang natin yung, uh, yung program natin. Start tayo, assign 9 ulit 0 to index. And the whole while saying, list 0 is 14, so hindi siya 49, increment, tuloy lang tayo, so 6 is not equal to 49, so increment ulit natin, then tuloy-tuloy lang, until makaabot tayo sa index 9, kasi yung index 8, yun yung 4, so yung list 8, that's 4, bago i-increment natin siya, Pagdating dito sa index 9, index is no longer less than the size of the list. Kaya hindi na siya tutuloy dun sa ating while loop at magre-return na lang siya ng false. So yan, hindi niya mahanap yung item sa list so nag-return na lang siya ng false. So here's our solution. 
Um, one thing to note lang is there are many ways to write yung ating pag-iterate through a list. First is yung gagamitin lang natin yung while. Yung other form ng ating pag-iterate through the list is yung paggamit ng for loop. Itong form ng for loop is similar dun sa for loop ng mga languages na based sa C. Kasi ang C na for loop is like this. You start off with yung pang-initialize natin ng isang variable or any number of variables ang ginagamit natin pang iterate through the list. Then yung next part is yung condition that should hold through every iteration. So parang while separated by a semicolon. Then finally, separated again by a semicolon is an operation that should be done at the end of every iteration. So in this case, it's just incrementing the index para magproceed tayo dun sa next item sa array. While this form of for is ubiquitous, maraming language kumagamit nito, hindi siya ganun kadali basahin. There's another way to write this for loop Kasi kung nag increment lang tayo by 1, gagamitin na yung for loop na ginamit na yun dun sa trajectory. Which is yung for index is assigned 0 to dun sa last na number na habol natin. So, kailangan natin mag-iterate from 0 to 8. So, that's index assigned 0 to size of list. So, that's 9 minus 1 which is 8, which 8 na habol natin. At this point, mukhang okay na siya. Medyo malit na siya. Medyo readable na siya. But one thing to note is, madalas tayo nag-iterate over list. Kaya, for every time ka gumamit ng list, hindi mo may iwasan mag-iterate ka. Ang form na to, parang more like nag-iterate ka over numbers. You're not really iterating. You're not really going through each item sa list. So in some programming languages, we have this form. So for each list item in list, so, dito sa looping statement na to, itong form na to, siya na bahala mag-assign ng mga items dun sa ating variable na binigay. So, for example, list item, first iteration niya, kukunin niya yung unang item, which is list 0. Then, next iteration, kukunin niya yung sunod na item, which is list 1, and so on, until aabot siya sa dulo. Kaya yun, for each list item in list, yan, return true if list item is equal to number. Medyo straightforward siya. And in a lot of cases, mas madali siyang intindihan. Okay, so that's how you search for an item in an unordered list. Tingnan naman natin yung isang solution dun sa searching an item in an ordered list. So ito, we have an ordered list. Haanapin natin si Certi na naman. Ang main difference ordered list is meron kang magagawang tricks para mapadali yung buhay mo. Now, for example, may libro ka, yung pages nun is an ordered list of items. Kaya pag naghahanap ka ng page dun sa libro, pwede ka mag-umpisa sa gitna. Kunwari, inahanap mo yung page 150. Bago yung libro mo, isa thousand pages. Pwede mong buklatin yung libro sa gitna, bago umabot ka sa 450. Kung wala dun, syempre, pupunta ka sa kaliwa. Hindi ka, po, hindi ka magahanap dun sa may kanan kasi mas malaking numbers dun sa may kanan. So, punta ka sa kaliwa and huhula-hulain mo until umabot ka dun sa page na inahanap mo. So, that approach, yung parang hahatiin mo yung pinagahanapan mo is the key point dito sa ating susunod na program which is yung binary search. So, we have here yung may lower bound, higher bound, and nahanapin na yung middle based dun sa lower and higher bound. And yun, dana na lang natin para hindi na kayo mahirapan mag-intindihan kung anong ginagawa nito. Okay, so we do a binary search again, finding 30. So, we have lower bound is assigned to 0, higher bound is assigned to 8. Kasi kailangan sila tumuro dun sa kabilang dulo ng list natin. Then habang yung lower bound natin is less than or equal to upper bound, tutuloy-tuloy lang natin. Later, may kita nyo kung kailan mag-fail to. Pero at this point, halos buong dadaanan natin is palagi yan, lower is less than dun sa upper bound. Next, hanapin natin yung gitna nila. So 0 plus 8, that's 8 over 2, that's 4. Kaya list middle natin would point dun sa ating 26. 
Then, kita natin, hindi naman 26 is equal to 30. So, is list middle greater than yung number? So, it's false. So, imove natin yung lower bound natin lagpas dun sa list middle. Kasi, obviously, wala yung number na hinahanap natin simula dun sa umpisa ng list natin up to dun sa middle. Kaya, usog na yung lower bound natin pataas. So, next iteration, syempre, lower bound is still lower. Yung middle naman natin ngayon is now 5 plus 8, that's 13, divided by 2, that's 6.5, and floor of 6.5, this is a built-in function, which just removes the decimal point. Ang makukuha natin is 6. So, list 6 is 47. This list middle is greater than number, so greater than nga siya, 47 is greater than 30. Kaya uusugin na yung upper bound below ng list middle natin. Kaya dito, nakapoint na yung lower bound at upper bound dun sa same place. Kaya next iteration, middle would obviously point to the same place. And we can see that list 5 is equal to 30. Kaya ang re-return niya is true. Okay, so nakita natin, hinahati-hati natin at dinidiscard natin yung part ng list na alam natin wala dun yung item. So, what if naghanap tayo ng item na wala dun sa list? Say, 31. The entire process is just the same up to this point. Kasi yung list middle natin is not the same as dun sa ating hinahanap na number. 30 is not equal to 31. Kaya, punta lang tayo dun sa if list middle is greater than number, so that's false. Kasi yung middle na is 30, ang hinahanap na is 31. Kaya yung lower bound natin ay aakyat. Yung lower bound natin would be 6. Upper bound natin is 5 pa rin. Kaya magpifail siya dito sa while lower bound is less than or equal to upper bound. So, re-return na siya na false. So, yun yung mangyayari pag hindi niya mahanap yung item sa list. Okay. So, bakit natin ginagamit tong binary search na to? Bakit from 3 lines of code, nag-move tayo to 10 lines of code? Ang main reason dyan is performance. The, these two programs perform differently in different situations. For example, ito. How many comparisons is needed when searching a list with 1,000 items? Yung sa solution 1, tadaanan na yung lahat ng items sa list, diba? So, we have at most 1,000 searches and at the best case, one search. Kaya... Ang average case niya is around 500. So, 500.5, 500. On the other hand, kung ordered yung list natin, kasi nga, hinahati-hati natin yung ating list na hinahanap. Parang dinidiscard na yung kalahati ng list na hinahanap natin. Yung solution 2 would now have only 10 searches for the worst case. Kasi pag hati in mo yung 1,000, makakaabot ka dyan ng sampung hati bago ka makukuha ng isang number which is less than 1. So, yun. At most, you need just 10 searches. Yun, nakikita nyo, different programs, different approaches dun sa programs natin perform differently. Hindi yan sa number of lines ng code, hindi yan sa, ano, sa design niya ng program natin. And this whole performance thing, we're going to discuss that in a later track, which is yung algorithm track natin. But at this point, yun, di tayo sa program structure track. Punta na lang kayo dun sa mga links na nagpop up rito para i-discuss yung each part ng ating program.